what's up scrollgers it's nerf here and today we're gonna play some judgment on my second account because i've been playing a lot new, uh, recently um because i want to play a lot of scrolls but i don't really want to play ranked on my main account because it's the number one so i started to rank up with this and just as had the top 10 so that's pretty good two accounts in the top 11 right now i'm just playing grave locks but today we're gonna play judgment so let's just help jump right into it and actually I'm not sure how many times I've played Judgment on this account. Not much, only 61 wins. I think I have, I don't know, probably like 400 wins in Judgment on my main account. I'm not sure. That's just a guesstimate. Okay. So, nothing really jumps out at me here. Nog, Skythorn isn't too bad. Now there's Nog, Meiji Wolf. The Spark here, I don't know. I guess I'll just take uh, the creature on this first row. Actually, I'll take the Inferno last. Just the, probably the best scroll out of these four. These are pretty bad scrolls. Now, this gives me growth. Skythorn is decent. Destroyer is pretty good. So, four, like, okay scrolls. I don't know. But seeing I have a Spark here, a Nog here, and a Piercing Projectile. I think the energy looks the best. So I'll take the destroyer. Yeah, and there's a hard marks in here. That, that's good. So now I'll take the spark. Machination mindset could be useful. Uh, Protecting projectile. Um, hired marksman over incendiaries or inferno blast. Now I see a uh, righteous partisan noggin destroyer. Okay. Machination. This gives me order actually. Maybe I want it. No, I'll take the machination mindset. Clock library is decent. I think I want another destroyer. Ember Bonds is almost like a spark, so I'll take that. A clock library is good. Another spark is good. Uh, useless contraption or desperation. I'm gonna have a lot of two cost stuff. Let's just take the useless contraption. A uh, spark, a dust runner is good. Feedback jolt, more removal. I, I'll, there's a ton of removal in this deck for, especially for like a judgment deck. This is awesome, but it's not like really that many strong creatures. I only have two creatures, right? Yeah, I gotta start getting some strong creatures. Here, I don't know. Alambital. Okay, end of reason. Oh, there's a gravel oh, That's good. End of reason. I guess I'll take it. Mm, probably won't end up using it, but it could be cool. Uh, could splash him. We could be all right. We got some good energy stuff on this row, and we got a creature over here too. So we'll start by taking the Gravelock Guard. Athea. Okay, that our draft just got a lot better. <laughs> Top of River Thea. Like big powerful scrolls like this are very good in judgment because uh, your opponent often does not have removal for them. But in constructed, big powerful cards are not always as good because they'll just be wiped from the board really fast. But here, I can go Skull Shrine, which will help me get to the Thea. Iron Whip, um, good. I love, I love Iron Whip, it's one of my favorite scrolls. It's, um, I like it how it's like, double-edged sword, is that the right, is that the right, like, like, saying for this? Like, uh, if it has, like, two, um, two uses, like, you can use it as a way, as a removal, or you can use it as, like, haste, but yeah. Naga pack is also like removal, pretty cheap removal, but I think uh, I'd have to take the creature. This guy works well with Machination Mindset too. I don't have enough creatures right now. And like I said, creature, I'll take the Ganomaton over the Piercing Projectile. Burn, awesome. I'll take the Thea here, and Sendaries here. Are pretty strong creatures here, I'll have to decide on that proximity charge or the Raider. And Sendaries, definitely burn, best energy scroll. One of the best, uh, anyways. Now, Raider or Proximity Charge? I've only taken two non-energy scrolls so far. Uh, what's our card looking like? We have six creatures, and we're about halfway through, so we need more creatures. So I do like the Raider, but Raider's not really that good on its own. I almost wish I got, took the Desperation before, because I don't really have a way to buff his attack besides, like, Machination Mindset for one. He already has one. Let's, I can draw Elders. That'd be perfect. Hmm. My curve... I don't know if I really want a one drop in the curve. I'd rather, I think I'd almost rather have the proximity. I already have a bunch of four cost stuff though. 
This is tough. Uh, we're going for the Prox charge. Now, not good great stuff over here. I'll just take the, I don't know, rag. Actually, this gives me current energy, so I'll just take the energy siphon. We'll see. Replicates on, that's good. Copper Ottomans on here. Um, another hired marksman, which is really nice. I don't know. Sister of the Fox here, definitely replicates on. Uh, Roller Oz, I might just end up taking that just so I can take it after a few wins. I'll take the hired marksman, so I have a couple of those. I have nothing in between my 4 cost and 8 cost, so that I'd really like to have some path to the Thea. Ash Runner. Snargle's good. Another 4 drop. I guess I'll take the Roller Oz. Two Snargles. Alright, we have, we have a good amount of creatures now. Uh, I think we're going to be mono energy. Okay, and then another burn, Raider. So we have multiple burns now. This is, I think this is going to be pretty good. Just give me, like, give me, like, if I get, like, an Elder or uh, anything really, five or more costed energy creature, I'll be really happy. Uh, whatever. Urhal, double champion deck. Alright, this is going to be a mono deck. So it doesn't really matter what I take here. Alright, there's another creature. Uh, a freak. He's good. If I could just draw an elder. See, that that's really good. Six cost. That's a nice way to get to the, the uh, outcast. And that will be it. So, I think this is pretty good. If I got an Elder, that'd be just perfect. But still, pretty darn good draft, I think. Let's add our scrolls. We have some extra, though. We'll take out some. Catapult of Goo just sucks. We can take those out. Uh, we need to take out two more. 15 creatures is a nice amount. Not sure what else. I like all the removal. I mean, Grave Roll, yeah. We don't need Grave Roll. Hmm. Because I don't have big attack buffs, I almost want to get rid of the Raider or the Ash Runner. What are my attack buffs? I don't have any attack buffs. So the Raider and the Ash Runner are just 1-1s. One yeah, that's it. They're just 1-1s. One my biggest attack buffs are Machinist Magic Page of Projectile, which only increased by 1. That's cool. I got both of these. These are like opposite scrolls almost. Um, so, what's our, yeah, let's take out, I mean, the one drops aren't too bad, though, I already have Dust Runner. Dust Runner, Pierce, and Projectile is really nice. I'll take out the Ash Runner, just because the Gravelock Raider will help the Freak attack a little more often. Let's see how the, uh, the curve's not great. If I had a nice card in 5 and 7, it'd be perfect. Maybe, uh, we just want to stick in a Roller off so I can take it. Nah, I'm going for the wins, not the, not the reward. So let's call this, um, I don't know, just energy. Alright, so let's, we want to get to that 4 cost threshold pretty fast, and hopefully it works out well. So we find a match right away. And Hunru. Good luck, have fun to you. And I will keep the starting hand even though, I, even though I don't have a 2 drop. Not sure what I want to get rid of here. I think I'm going to get rid of the Replicaton. It was a tough choice deciding between Replicaton or Outcast to get rid of. But I, I want to keep the Outcast over the Replicaton, I think. I don't think I'm going to have turns where I'm left over with two energy early on. So, may as well just have this guy a little stronger. And now I'll get rid of the Copper. I mean, I could put it like over here and move you down so whatever he puts down next turn will be hit by something. But, I think I'm just going to sacrifice it. He was really just like a backup plan for turn two if like my opponent played like a creature on the top or the bottom. So now this coming turn I can go with an Ember Bonds to try to kill stuff or Grave Black Outcast and it looks like Grave Black Outcast. And Hard Marksman for the next turn. So I'll get rid of the Ember Bonds although it's nice removal. I know I have Sparks and Burns and Inferno Blast. Stuff like that. Keep you back a little bit and put a Grave Black Outcast here. I might just play with Destroyer because I can, I can destroy this obelisk in a couple turns. 
and take and establish a bunch of board control. Um, but these two guys uh, combined next attacks would take this out anyways. So next turn is most likely just hired marksman turn. Only has three health, like the rest of my board. All right, so let's see. Hooner sacrifices resources and plays a righteous partisan, so he's going to get a scroll from that, unfortunately. Now, an Inferno Blast next turn might do a lot because I would be able to destroy this with this, and then the Dust Runner could probably get to the back here and destroy the righteous partisan. So I'm going to keep that over the destroyer and play the Hired Marks in front. He's more valuable than the Raider, but right now I have to keep the units that are attacking next turn protected in case he has like some kind of haste or something and he's going for resources plays a cross omen and a royal spearman okay oh and a reason what does that even do for me this turn <laughs> these guys wouldn't get blown up only this guy would so it would do, it wouldn't be any better than in front of us be worse without lose him but unfortunately he had the surreal spirit in front so i'm not gonna be able to destroy this righteous partisan because i might lose my hired marksman maybe if i can get a burn nah didn't draw a burn burn would have been good yes it would have so i don't know do i destroy you this turn I mean, he could just run away from it. If he puts a creature like in one of these spots, that'd be good because then I could put a destroyer down. He has at least one turn of not being able to get out of the range. But here, I think I just have to Inferno Blast. At least I'm just killing a creature. And I am losing the Hired Marksman. Unfortunately. If I drew a Piercing Projectile, that'd be nice there. But I actually didn't have enough resources to play it either. Okay, that's a little bit annoying. He's ramping up. And he's moving up. Now let's see. Another hired marksman. Do I try to ramp up to Thea? Yeah, why not? Let's get rid of the uh, destroyer because he's going to be able to play around that as he wishes. And although this guy has a low countdown, he's going to be like attacking next. I'm actually going to run away with my whole guy, all my guys. I'm, I'm going to kind of hope he just stays away from me so that I can just have a couple safe turns of ramping up so I can play with Thea but he does not leave me alone unfortunately and okay you know what I guess we'll play, wait to play Thea in the next deck cycle because I, since he since he's enga engaging me I can't really hit forward to have dead turns so I'll sacrifice Thea for scrolls piercing projectile is going to be awesome on this dust runner when I have a chance now I have a spark a spark or snark what should I do I think I should just destroy both of these guys so this rod is gonna be a 5-5 five, five, unfortunately and I don't get to use all my resources but uh, I think this is the best play here and you're gonna this rod is gonna be a lower count on the my dudes might as well just take uh, control of the middle could play a uh, Piercing Projectile on the Dust Runner right now, but I don't want to give him more of a reason to destroy it. Okay. So now, a Ducal Skirmisher. That guy is a threat. Okay, so no Vount Dispersal for you. I want to keep that Piercing Projectile for this Dust Runner, I think. That can be very effective so I get rid of that and unfortunately these guys have a lot of health so a burn won't really do much I guess I'll just play snorkel and grave lock raider I'm going to lure him to killing the snorkel and not the attacking grave lock outcast or kill the raider and hopefully he doesn't have like haste for this skirmisher like a blessing of haste, eternal sword, a blessing of haste, focus would just really hurt. Because next turn I can have this marksman just 
hit any creature, and then I can burn it to finish it off. I could also play. I could also play. I could play burn and pierce and protect on next turn. Basically, if both the marksman and the dust runner survive this turn, I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna have a pretty strong turn. He only has three scrolls. And if one of those are rot eater, roasted bean potion. Oh man. Oh well. At least this guy survives. So I could still play Pierce and Projectile on you. What would that do for me? Without playing Pierce, I could actually shoot you. I could actually just burn the front one and destroy the one behind it. And deal two damage to you, to put you in burn range. Or I could shoot you, burn you. Then you have four health. Yeah. All right. Either way, I think I'm destroying both rod eaters, unless I directly attack you with this and then burn it. So let's start with the burn. And do I pierce and projectile you just to deal two extra damage to you? I don't have sparks in the deck, so I kind of want to. Yeah, let's do it. And unfortunately, Rustling Potion is not an enchantment anymore. So I won't be able to destroy him with the feedback jolt. All right, I think that was the best turn. That was uh, my best possible play. So Ducal Spearman, come on, just enchant him with something. Nope. Okay. So let's get rid of the feedback jolt. And that's not enough. I needed I needed big things that turn. So no, I don't think it's worth it to let him die just to deal one damage to the Ducal Spearman. So I'll move you out of the way. And I'll play a clock over in front instead of the outcast. Could do a machination mindset, but save that for a surprise. And hopefully he does not have pothers, stuff like that. Man, if this guy just had two counts then. Just he's so cool hired marksman, but it's just three health and three counts down. Is too little and too much. The health is too little. The uh count down is too much. I mean if he was a if he was a three two four for four, he would probably be OP because of his, because of his awesome ability though. Okay, so Machination Mindset would be enough to kill him, but I'd take damage myself. Proximity Charge is pretty decent. I think I'm going to keep that, and I'll sacrifice the Gravelock Outcast. Four scrolls. Burn. I could burn you. Do I just burn you now? Just in case he has more haste. I saw I already had one Rosa Bean Potion, so yeah, I'll just burn you now. And I'll just play Imagination Mindset just so I can take that out. Okay. So now I have my Piercing Protile and my Imagination Mindset on the board. And he has lots of resources. And a few more scrolls on me, so it's a little high. But if I can get that clock lever to go off, I'm going to be in good shape. He's running away a little bit. Let's see. My deck's about to cycle. So I can deal... 4 damage to him and 2 damage to him, or I can just deal 3 damage to one of them. I think I'd rather do the 4 and 2 even though I'm moving into their territory. Uh, let's get rid of the useless contraption for scrolls. Gravelock Freak. Now I have a choice to make. I First I could spark you, I think I should put- yeah, I think I have to get rid of him right now just in case there is a- there is a incoming- Blessing of Haste or something to make everything attack, so I'll use Spark and then I have four resources left. So I can play Proximity Charge, but you have ranged attack anyways, so I'll just plow through a Proximity Charge. Uh, so let's just, I think I'll just play Gravelock Guard and Automaton. Next turn could be a Freak turn. So... I guess I'll still go like this. I'll put, actually put the guard behind. And then a spark. Okay, so now I have a bunch of Gravelocks on the board for the Freak. And hopefully, you can't do a lot to me. 
if he has speed, he could like do stuff, but chances are he doesn't. And having the clock library go off would improve my chances greatly of eventually getting a Thea out. Storm Knight, so he has pretty strong knights going. And a Infected Grave Block as the Chump Blocker. Okay. So I could Inferno Blast. I could Inferno Blast, um, and I would just deal. You would be down to 2 health, and you'd be down to 2 health too, because then you'd be able to deal some extra damage to him. Um, that's a solid option. I think I'm just going to sacrifice the proximity charge for scrolls. Save the Inferno Blast. Or no, I'll save the proximity charge. And send a reason draw. I'll just play the Freak this turn. And... I want to stay like this. I'm not sure what to do here. Sure. I'm a little vulnerable to, like... If he has like a some kind of way to make the Arbalester attack, but I'll be okay with all my other dudes. Next turn, Clock Lover goes off, and if that Clock Lover goes off and he doesn't have a huge turn, I'm probably pretty good to go. Wing Shield, and is that it? Tribesman. So how am I going to get through that Wing Shield? Don't really have. A good way to get through with that. Oh, there's a burn. That will do it. And I have a Thea for next turn. So. How do I do this? Unfortunately, I don't have. Uh, by burning the wing shield, I would move you in front. Mm. I don't have enough to get rid of of the Arbalester. Do I just take out the Arbalester? No, I'm just I'm gonna keep the Arbalester al al alive. Yeah, whatever. Now, I wish I had, um, Uh, I guess why not? I have a lot of scrolls, may as well just place a wall down. Now I wish I had that in front of last. Because then I'd be able to take up this Arbalister. And next turn I can go Top Rivithia. I'm sure Humru will like my deck even less. Or I could always go with Double Snarkel. He does not let me go Thea. Um, but good win for us so i guess that'll be it for today hopefully i can get five wins with that deck so thanks for watching like the video if you enjoyed subscribe for more content like this and some people have been asking like judgment tips and stuff i'm thinking about making like a a uh, thorough judgment guide video um probably i'll probably want to release it uh shortly after source release or maybe right before so the new players can can be directed to it so I'll think about that. But anyways, that'll be it. So I'll see you guys next time.